Boys is based on a true story that happened in the 90s in the early Wild West of the Internet. Uh, there was a young man who had gone online in the early version of what were called chat rooms and developed a friendship with another boy and in the course of many, many months wove around this boy through the internet in real life some like 80 characters and built an entire universe around this young boy because essentially he was in love with him. So basically, it's a detective thriller story through the medium of Nico Muley's music and Craig Lucas's libretto as we begin to enter into that weird divide between the world of cyberspace and the world of computers and our own daily life. What was it so exciting for me about this story and what was so so sort of poignant about it is that it, it's, you know, we don't live in a place where there's masked balls really anymore. So I thought that the internet, and especially the early days of the internet, the, the sort of chat rooms before video chat, before internet, when you really could pretend to be another person is the most, it, it's actually quite a traditional subject for an opera, I, th I thought. What's thrilling for me about writing Two Boys is that we we very quickly realized that what the, the way the chorus was going to function was in this sort of ecstatic language of overlapping voices, almost as if you're seeing the entire kind of aggregate of all the things people are saying on the internet at once. And for me, what that sounds like, what that should sound like, would be the sort of music of the first Pentecost when all of a sudden everyone's speaking a million languages and the room is engulfed in flame. <laughs> It's a difficult thing to ask a composer how, to, how you characterize not just your language but your style. And I always think that style, it's all a process. And it's not something that, it's not something that anyone needs to give a name to until you're dead. And it's better not to do it while you're alive if you can avoid it. Um, what I can always answer is, is what, what music do I like and what, what music sort of thrills me. Um, and in, in, in my case, it's, it's the music of, of the English Renaissance. It's, it's um, Orlando Gibbons, it's William Byrd, it's Thomas Tallis. And then it's, it's um, the music, sort of early Stravinsky, and you know th things in, in the operatic tradition. Something like the Rake's Progress for me occupies that very strange intersection between something very old and something radically new, and you don't quite know on which side of the of the, of the lintel you are. Met audiences respond to the integrity of the journey. This is a serious, serious composer, and it's great dramatic writing for a unique dramatic writing for the opera. <laughs> I would like to think that an audience can come out of this thinking that it's a contemporary take on a very, very traditional story of what people do in the face of a sort of loneliness to sort of costume themselves to make connections with other people. And I'd also like to think that an audience can see this and have a great night at the theater, which I think is really your job if you write an opera, is you have to make sure that people have a good, a good time at the theater. <laughs>